Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Contrail adding a control node learning byte. Alright, so the first question you might have, especially if you're new to Contrail, is what is a control node in Contrail? And basically, it's the control plane. You may be aware that Contrail is a, a software-defined networking solution. And in that solution, in, in, inside of Contrail, there's a couple different nodes. There's uh, a config node, and an analytics node, a control node, and a compute node. And the config node orchestrates the Contrail solution. The analytics node gathers data. The control node, which we're talking about now, is the one that handles the control functions. And the compute node houses the vRouter, which handles the forwarding functions. So we're talking about the control node, which is the control plane for the Contrail solution, which is Juniper's uh, software-defined networking solution. It's logically centralized, but physically distributed. You can look at this with this bullet. Think about, if you're familiar with a, a service provider network, think about BGP route reflectors. Very similar. BGP route reflectors, they simply reflect BGP routes to different BGP pairs. They're logically centralized, but they don't have to be physically in the same building or next to each other. They can be physically distributed. Same thing with the control nodes here. Logically centralized, you know, we're going to have one control node function. You know, we could have multiple control nodes that work together, but they can be physically distributed. And what does a control node do? It handles the management, control, and analytic functions. And so what's going to happen there is the control node is going to have lots of duties. One thing it does do is it does reflect routes. You know, routes between the V routers and possibly a gateway router through BGP and XMPP. And it also sets up and controls networking information with the V routers. And that's the last bullet here is it does manage the V router. So it manages the forwarding plane. And that's what a centralized controller does in any software defined networking situation is it handles all the networking whereas it handles all the control functions in networking and then gives those directions to the uh, distributed forwarding plane which in this case is the V routers. And so let's talk about adding a control node in Contrail. Now why would you want to add a control node? Well really it's all about redundancy, high availability. If you only have one control node in your setup and that control node goes down or is unreachable you don't want your entire setup to go away. You don't want your entire Contrail cluster to fail and go away. So let's talk about adding a second control node. You know, so in this instance, that we'll, well, the example we'll show here shortly, we'll have one control node and then we'll add a second one. So to do that, the first thing you have to do is you have to update the testbed.py file on the config node itself. And that's found under the opt Contrail utils fav file testbeds directory and then it's the testbed.py file as shown in on the slide here. And then of course be very careful not to make syntax mistakes. It's very finicky in regards to having exact syntax. You make a syntax mistake it'll error out when you try to uh, run fab commands. And the good news is if you do have a syntax mistake and you run a fab command it's going to tell you exactly where the problem is. And so it's very helpful you know it gives you an error it says hey you know, it gives you a little care pointing to where you actually have the problem, specifies the line number. So you can go look that up. So it's not that big a deal, just more a pain, a time consuming type thing. And then let's talk about adding a new control node to the Contrail cluster. First thing you need to do is you need to install the necessary Contrail packages on the new node. To do that, you can use the ISO or the uh, RPM packages. You know, it just depends on however you want to go about that. I personally would recommend using the ISO. It's the all-in-one package. A lot less work versus using like the RPMs. And so I would recommend using the ISO here. And then you need to do the initial setup on the new node. And that includes like setting up the host name, uh, setting up uh, the management IP address and the interface. Very important because if you don't do that part, there's no way you're going to be able to add it to the Contrail cluster later. So now that you've done those steps, on the config node, you need to navigate to the 
opt control utils directory then you use these three commands in the order specified on the slide it's the fab create install repo node colon root at control IP address and what that first command does is it creates a repository on that new node and by creating that repository it sets it up so we can actually set it up as a control node and so the next command in the next bullet fab install underscore control underscore node root at IP address of the control node that installs the packages we need for the control node and then the following command or the last command fab setup underscore control underscore node colon root at IP address of control node that command sets it up so we first have to create a repository then we have to install the packages and then we have to set up the control node there's three separate commands you have to be aware of and each of these commands run scripts that are already on the config node All right so let's jump to the GUI itself and look at the GUI you know just a brief overview of what's going on here is we are inside of the control uh, user web interface and we're under monitor infrastructure dashboard we're able to see all the nodes we have two V routers one control node one analytics node and one config node well we really don't want to have only one config node we can see here that everything is looking good uh, it's green as far as the bubble chart goes and we are using version 1.03 in this example in this learning device so keep that in mind and so we can see that we just have one though you know we want some redundancy some high availability so let's jump into the CLI so first we need to edit that testbed file we need to do a few additional things here we need to add in new host syntax is very important 232 is the actual IP address we're using and then under here under the role definitions we have to add in we have to reference the host name or the host that we specified beforehand and add it to the specific definitions and then we have to specify the actual host names in the environment so host 5 the new host that we defined it's going to be control-2 and that host name was previously configured on the control node so that has to match there then the, the root password for the new node and then we have to specify the OS that we're using on the new node and we're using CentOS and that is the end of what we need to do with that file and then we have to navigate to the opcontrol utils directory to run the actual fab commands and the first one is the create install node repo node specify root as the username and then we specify the IP address and this is going to take a few minutes so I'm going to pause the video while this finishes alright that script is done now we got to do the fab install control at root or using root at 10.10.10.232 the management address and this is going to take a few minutes as well so I'm going to pause the video until the script is done okay that script is done we're going to run the last fab command we're going to uh, set up the uh, control node okay and I'm going to pause the video again while that script runs alright that script is done so let's jump back to the GUI you can see here we have two control nodes but one is not working correctly or says configuration unavailable the other one's fine and the, what we need to do is we actually need to configure it as a BGP pair so we jump to configure infrastructure BGP pair click the create button and we have to enter the host name here and this has to be exact if you if you capitalize the C when it's not supposed to be capitalized it'll it'll think it's a different control node so case matters here you have to be exact you put in the IP address and then we specify control node here click save then let's jump back to monitor we see we have two control nodes shows one though control one BGP mismatch 
Control 2 BGP mismatch. And the reason behind that is they're still negotiating the BGP parameters. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And we need to actually refresh this page to see what's going on. Okay, things look a little better now. We actually see Control 1 is there. Everything's good. And Control 2 is there as well. And so we have successfully added an additional control node. And uh, that actually brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we uh, talked about adding a control node in Contrail, discussed what a control node was, then we talked about the steps to add a control node, as well as went through a demo of actually adding a control node, walking you through those steps. So I hope this learning byte will be helpful for you in your day-to-day uh, -day work. And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.